The system facilitated their departure upon clearing the gate before its disappearance. During the wait outside, it was noted that Subaru had appropriated his jacket, driven by a resolute desire for retribution, particularly due to the chilling cold. Another member discerned inscriptions on the entrance, clear indications already on display. The abrupt alert surprised them, considering it had only been since the duo traversed through the gate. Despite the usual two-hour duration for completion, their doubts dissolved when Subaru and Sayaka re-emerged from the gate once more. The man without the jacket promptly interrogated Sayaka, suspecting possible deception. However, a series of notifications unfolded, each individual receiving them. They had successfully conquered a two-star gate. This additional time would now augment the sky clock. All eyes turned upward to validate this event, indeed, the clock adjusted, unveiling additional time. This underscored the importance of promptly clearing the gates. The sky clock, an immense global timepiece, carried a rumored consequence, the world's conclusion upon its time depletion. The singular means to avert this apocalypse was by completing more gates and extending the clock's duration. The man found it implausible that Subaru and Saka, with their comparatively modest levels, had managed a two-star gate. His incredulity heightened as, as Subaru approached him, tendering an apology for the damage to his jacket, assuring him of future compensation. Rather than holding on to resentment, the man's demeanor generously shifted. Subaru, resolute on avenging his jacket's theft, acknowledged the formidable skills of the pair. The gamers paid homage, bowing in appreciation for the successful conquest of the dungeon. Following this, the assembly dispersed, and the portal they had emerged from began to disintegrate and fade away. On the ground lay two-star equipment as loot, Saka eagerly retrieved it, flashing a delighted smile at Subaru. Their intention was to negotiate the item, yet before their departure, Subaru posed an inquiry. Subsequently, they opted for a nearby cafe as their next rendezvous point for further discussion. At the cafe, Saka discerned Subaru's desire to claim all the funds from her account, despite their initial agreement to split the proceeds. However, articulating her concerns proved challenging as Subaru remained deeply absorbed in his coffee. Feeling a sense of relief, Subaru inwardly expressed gratitude for the chance, the chance to visit the cafe after clearing the gate. Attempting to shift his attention, Saka raised her voice, persistently querying him about the funds. The individual identified as M evasively mentioned an inability to discuss the reasons behind the current inability to access any funds. A puzzling response from Vanquish ignited Saka's suspicion regarding his true identity, prompting her to question the authenticity of his name. His conduct raised doubts, using an alias while clearing a two-star gate as a mere level one player seemed dubious. Observing his unease, Saka reassured him, expressing disinterest in prying into his secrets. She affirmed that their shared combat experience had revealed his inherent benevolence, recalling how he had saved her life. Saka genuinely regarded the enigmatic M as a reliable ally, offering her unwavering support if necessary. These sentiments took Subaru by surprise, triggering recollections of his poignant past. It struck him as a rare instance where someone had displayed genuine kindness toward him, profoundly touching his heart. In gratitude, Subaru's unexpected response startled Saka. Recognizing her unique position as the sole individual who saw his true self, the M disclosed his true identity, revealing himself as Arya. Establishing a bond of trust, he proceeded to recount recent events in his life. Upon learning about Subaru's complexities, Saka could only contemplate the sheer intricacy of his circumstances. She later discovered that Taiga was, in fact, Subaru's stepbrother and learned of the incident involving the theft of the gold door from Subaru. This event drove Subaru's urgent quest for strength, strength as his life hung in peril. In return, Saka opened up about her life to Subaru, disclosing the presence of her two sisters, both possessing silver doors while she held a mere copper one. Initially aligned, she was eventually ousted by them, deeming her a liability. She turned towards Subaru, proposing a mutual endeavor to strengthen their alliance, extending her hand in a symbolic gesture of their pledge never to deceive or abandon each other. Witnessing her sincere commitment, our protagonist felt deeply touched. Subaru enthusiastically embraced her proposal, affirming their collaboration. 
Preferring a more informal approach, they decided to discard formal titles, opting for a relaxed mode of address. Meanwhile, within the primary conference chamber of the Player Federation's headquarters, a crucial assembly was underway discussing Tekka's imprisonment. Runji briefed the fellow gold players about the diminished count, leaving only six capable of taking specific actions. One member expressed their long-standing disdain for TAA due to his impudence. Another voiced concern, emphasizing that only gold-ranked players possess the capability to tackle gates of four to five-star caliber, a pressing issue considering the circumstances. The decision was made to extend their working hours to compensate for Taga's absence. Additionally, Orangi, Orangi proposed involving some silver-tier players to aid in clearing five-star gates. This proposal instilled skepticism in both of them, recognizing the inferior prowess of silver-ranked players in comparison. Nevertheless, they considered the potential effectiveness if they could mobilize around 30 individuals. Silver-tier individuals are presently confronted with seven imperative five-star gates encircling Tokyo that urgently demand attention. Renji entrusted Julietta's team, led by their captain, a level 38 figure at the headquarters, with the task of clearing one such five-star gate. Both Sayaka and Subaru had entered the location. Sayaka noticed Julieta's team departing from the premises as Subaru, inattentive, narrowly avoided a collision with a few of their members. Julieta, who observed the near mishap, advised Subaru to exercise increased caution in his future movements. As they passed by, our protagonist keenly sensed the team's imposing presence. Sayaka highlighted their reputation as the preeminent team among the silver tier ranks. The pair arrived at the headquarters with the intention of securing access to a two-star gate, confident in their capabilities to confront it. Their chosen gate was situated in Moro City, discernible from a distance due to its towering structure, equivalent in height to a building. This specific two-star gate, known as the Soldier Dumping Ground, had a limited span of 17 hours before creatures emerged within its confines. Upon entering, it became apparent that players possessed the liberty to freely traverse in and out of gates without locking them from within, thereby enabling scouting of the surroundings. This was how they stumbled upon the, this particular gate. Sayaka expressed her belief that the layout of the dungeon was highly compatible with her abilities, directing Subaru to seal the door to initiate their quest officially. Her excitement was palpable in her demeanor. She unraveled a strategy to fully maximize her skills. Abruptly, skeletal entities emerged from the staircase's base, ascending rapidly. Subaru sensed their feeble energy, yet an unsettling aura emanated from them. Hastening, he looked downward. A potent energy emanated from the deepest level of the gate, a sensation keenly perceived by our protagonist. The skeletal troops approached closer. Sayaka's previously cheerful demeanor began to show signs of worry. She hadn't foreseen encountering such an extensive army, their sheer numbers were overpowering. Suddenly, a skeleton lunged toward her. Subaru noticed this movement from his peripheral vision. Confronted by the menacing force, she found herself immobilized. Swiftly, our protagonist sprang into action, utilizing his ability to shield her from harm. Taken aback by the close call, Sayaka activated her own capabilities. She reproached herself for recklessly straying too close to danger. Yet, contemplation had to be postponed, another surge of skeletons was advancing toward her once again. Subaru positioned himself as her shield, taking advantage of this momentary respite. Sayaka initiated a sequence of counterattacks. She expressed her appreciation to Subaru for his timely interventions. Additionally, she apprised him of the formidable power levels of their adversaries, they were all at least level 10, a daunting realization. The gate's exit hinged upon its complete clearance. Their clear strategy was evident, eliminate every monster and eventually confront the main threat. Positioned at the base of the stairs, Subaru volunteered to assume the defensive role, allowing Sayaka to focus on annihilating the skeletal enemies. Their primary objective was to reduce reduce their numbers. Our protagonist contemplated the challenges facing Sayaka, the sheer quantity of adversaries posed a significant dilemma. One by one, skeletons fell, yet this effort was visibly draining on Sayaka. In his eagerness, Subaru urged Sayaka to reconsider their approach to engaging with the skeletons, 
pushing her close to her limits. Yet, Sayaka maintained a momentary silence before turning towards him, her eyes glinting with purpose. In reality, defeating more skeletons accelerates my leveling up and stamina regeneration, she disclosed. As evidence of her claim, Sayaka had indeed ascended to level 10. A playful wink from her confirmed the validity of her statement, a rise in her level corroborating her words. Empowered by this development, Sayaka encouraged Subaru to hasten their pace. Abruptly, a massive surge of water surged forward, a manifestation of his innovative technique known as Blood Tide. The flood threatened to engulf the entire staircase. With her rapid reflexes, Sayaka swiftly maneuvered to the edge of the stairs to avoid the incoming wave. Meanwhile, Subaru remained wholly absorbed in channeling his skill, depleting all his mana reserves. Determined, he aimed to incapacitate all enemies in a single decisive move. As he sensed the skeletons within his grasp, he manipulated the nature of the tidal wave, causing it to solidify. The ensnared monsters became immobilized, trapped within the frozen cascade. cascade. Witnessing this, Sayaka marveled at the adaptability and potency of Subaru's abilities. However, Subaru, exhausted and nearing his limit, implored Sayaka to take advantage of the immobilized state of the enemies, reminding her of the temporary duration of his ability. With fervor, she leaped into action, systematically striking the ensnared skeletons. With each precise attack, she delivered devastating blows to the creatures. In a short span, her level surged once more, reaching level 15 after executing a single combination of moves. A newfound vitality surged within her, invigorating her movements. She signaled to Subaru to handle the remaining adversaries, displaying confidence in his abilities. With determination, he clenched his fist, and in an instant, the lingering skeletons disintegrated into dust. This swift and intense combat bore fruit as Subaru, too, underwent a surge in levels. Everything unfolded at an accelerated pace. They unveiled his enhanced strength, now at level 16. Feeling rejuvenated, Sayaka's expression conveyed a blend of amusement and admiration, as if contemplating whether even their adversaries were apprehensive of Subaru's immense power. Yet unknown to their awareness, a solitary skeleton had stealthily eluded their relentless assault. As anticipated, Sayaka remained unharmed. Once again, Subaru swiftly intervened to protect her. He warned her against complacency, urging her to stay vigilant. Another wave of skeletons emerged, and both individuals realized that at this rhythm, their progression in levels would be steady, steady before confronting the boss. Amid the skirmish with these skeletons, Subaru harbored an enduring sense of unease regarding the lower reaches of this gateway. He detected a mounting pressure emanating from the depths below. Progress notifications appeared, signaling their advancements. Sayaka had ascended to level 20, while Subaru had reached level 19. Eventually, they reached the deepest point of the gate. A formidable boss materialized, taking the form of a mage-like skeleton, identified as the late Empress Judith, boasting an imposing level of 29. Both Subaru and Sayaka acknowledged the elevated challenge this boss posed. Empress Judith began unleashing her powers, enveloped in a menacing dark aura. Swiftly, she conjured dark whips, poised to wreak havoc on their surroundings. Sayaka stood frozen in disbelief, the relentless assault showed no signs of abating. In response, Subaru activated his own ability, conjuring what appeared to be a protective barrier around them. He keenly sensed the monster's overwhelming strength, further amplified by an artifact it wielded. Whispering to Subaru, Sayaka admitted the stark reality of her vulnerability against an opponent with such long-range capabilities. She expressed her helplessness in battling the creature with her current skill set. The weight of responsibility heavily burdened Subaru. Despite facing the boss head-on, doubt plagued his mind. The unsettling feeling he experienced upon entering the gate didn't seem solely connected to the impending battle with the adversary. As they stood on the brink of their epic confront confrontation, an unusual glitch-like anomaly began to materialize around them. Despite the late Empress Judith initiating her skill once more, the shadowy tendrils narrowly missed the duo, thanks to their quick reflexes and defensive maneuvers. Growing increasingly concerned, Sayaka turned to Subaru, seeking his guidance on their next course of action. 
Swiftly analyzing their situation, Subaru realized that the boss was manipulating her skill by channeling mana. He contemplated whether the mechanics of her ability were similar to his blood mold skill. He also acknowledged that Sayaka's instantaneous void skill would likely prove ineffective against a level 29 creature. In contrast, his versatile blood mold skill provided both offensive and defensive capabilities. The circumstances suggested that Sayaka might not gain any experience points from this battle. Recalling their commitment to grow stronger together and stand by each other, Subaru's resolve solidified. He assured Sayaka that he would adeptly deflect the creature's assaults, even amidst the chaos. Sayaka strived to convey a message amidst evading the incessant onslaught. Subaru, with urgency, implored her to take the lead and unleash a barrage of attacks against the boss until her endurance waned. Hesitantly, Sayaka agreed to the suggested approach. Without delay, Subaru swiftly optimized the viscosity of his blood mold skill. Upon witnessing this, the late Empress Judith momentarily paused her relentless attacks, seemingly captivated by Subaru's demonstration. He found himself surrounded by a radiant glow displaying an array of rainbow hues once again, while the boss monster appeared introspe introspective, as if deducing a crucial realization. Both opponents acknowledged this as a significant face-off showcasing their individual capabilities. In unison, they released their powers, leading to a monumental clash as their skills collided headlong. Astoundingly, the blood mold skill emerged as the victor, with specks of the viscous substance adhering to the boss, rendering it motionless. Subaru, with a decisive clench of his fists, commanded the blood to adopt adhesive properties. Witnessing this occurrence, Sayaka compared its texture to that of Machi, a Japanese delicacy. Seizing the opportune moment, Sayaka swiftly moved forward. She commented on the immense potential of Subaru's ability to make him seemingly invincible. However, Subaru humbly disagreed with this notion, acknowledging his vulnerability in comparison to other players within the community. Exerting all her might, Sayaka delivered a powerful strike to the immobilized boss. However, much to her disappointment, the attack seemed ineffective. Undeterred, she rallied, displaying an enhanced resolve and accuracy, launching a series of calculated combination attacks against the boss. In contrast, Subaru stayed resolute, maintaining the restraining force of his ability. Inwardly, he pondered the difficulties faced by support and defense players in their quest for leveling up, acknowledging the hurdles associated with their indirect engagement in combat. Understanding the impending lapse of his skill's duration, he alerted Sayaka about its imminent release. The late Empress Judith, ever vigilant, eagerly anticipated the seconds ticking away until her liberation. As the binding weakened, she summoned her dark tendrils once more. Despite Sayaka's efforts to evade, she found herself ensnared, yet she maintained, maintained her composure, displaying unwavering resolve. Suddenly, she was surrounded by a protective crimson ring that materialized just in time, shielding her from the impending attack. Subaru had managed to activate his ability precisely in the nick of time. Grateful and unharmed, Sayaka reassured him with a smile. This unexpected turn of events visibly agitated the late Empress Judith. Remarkably, she verbalized her thoughts, intensifying her dark aura as she questioned the source of Subaru's unique ability. Subaru, taken aback by encountering a conversing boss for the first time, was astonished. The monster, incredulous, found it inconceivable for such power to be bestowed upon a human. Connecting the dots, Subaru inferred that the late Empress Judith was alluding to Vanquish Al Sed to engage her in a dialogue. Despite his attempts to seek answers, the monster, teetering on the brink of a berserk state, grew even more potent and underwent a fearsome transformation. Saka recalled information passed down by her sister, some monsters would expend all their MP to undergo a metamorphosis, gaining tremendous strength in return. Both observers were gripped by horror as they realized the transformed boss was gearing up for a devastating assault. Just as Subaru and Saka were about to be hit, the system alerted Subaru to raise a protective barrier. Despite the shield's successful formation, the attack's sheer force was pushing it backward. The intense heat of the energy beam caused the blood forming the shield to rapidly sizzle and evaporate, draining Subaru's MP in the process. Faced with imminent MP depletion, Subaru was caught in a dilemma. 
Halting his shield would endanger Sayaka, yet maintaining it would exhaust his resources. In the midst of this dire scenario, Subaru's eyes emitted a prismatic glow, signaling an unusual energy shift. The boss monster grew wary, sensing, sensing a pivotal moment in the battle. A stronger shield materialized, confronting the monster's intensified attack. However, Subaru believed the moment had come. His shield transformed into a spear, piercing through the skeletal queen, signifying the conclusion of their conflict. Late Empress Judith contemplated her defeat while the system notified our main character of his victory against the boss entity. His level ascended to 20, yet Subaru remained skeptical, pondering whether the skeleton queen might have recognized Vanquish. He questioned whether the creatures within the gates reflected the owners behind the trial doors. Sayaka praised Subaru and admitted her continued reliance on him. Her acknowledgement resulted in her own level up. Subaru experienced a sense of fulfillment as both of them had grown stronger, triumphing over another gate. He resolved that when facing another boss, he would attempt communication. Sayaka noticed an anomaly, despite the boss's defeat, the gate remained uncleared. A rainbow anomaly appeared, enveloping them once more. Astonishingly, a rainbow door emerged behind Subaru, its reality difficult for him to comprehend. Sayaka explained that trial doors could appear repeatedly for players. Each unique door held a distinct challenge, rewarding a player with a new skill relevant to their class upon completion. Subaru speculated if this door's appearance correlated with his achievement of reaching level 20. Sayaka mentioned a rumor about Rinji, stating he had unlocked seven doors for his class. Her excitement envisioned their partnership becoming an unstoppable force. Lost in contemplation, Subaru recognized the potential of her words. Gaining additional skills could elevate him to the ranks of elite gold players. Radiating enthusiasm, Sayaka proposed that he face this new trial. Witnessing her fervor, Subaru found solace. Subsequently, he approached the rainbow door, curious about the outcome of this challenge and feeling anticipation surge between them. Upon Subaru's revelation of the door, a crimson streak lashed out, severing one of his arms, intensifying the tragedy. Sayaka, too, suffered a severe injury. Her expression, veiled with ambiguity, carried an undertone of remorse towards Subaru, sensing her own imminent demise due to the grievous wounds. Subaru's anguished cry echoed as he, too, lost an arm. His desperate attempt to reach Sokka was futile as an unseen force forcefully pushed him away from the door. A mysterious entity emerged, brandishing a colossal red chisel, its countenance exuding an aura akin to Vanquisher's power. Contrary to its expectations, both Subaru and Sayaka were present. Subaru, amidst grappling to identify this entity, prioritized Sokka's critical condition. The creature, responsible for the ominous sensation upon entering the gate, remained an enigma to Subaru, who was engulfed in despair, unable to utilize his skill to stop the bleeding. Feigning sincerity, the creature prodded Subaru about Sokka's significance, insinuating her potential hindrance to Subaru's journey. Its intent was clear, to provoke Subaru's wrath, which it successfully incited. A surge of intense energy energy erupted from Subaru, reflecting his fiery determination and resolve. He vehemently swore never to forgive the creature for its atrocities against Sayaka, vowing to bring it to justice. Subaru's unwavering determination both empowered and intrigued the creature, heightening its anticipation. In an instant, our main character closed the gap, confronting the creature face to face. The creature narrowly defended itself from Subaru's fierce attack, wielding its chisel skillfully. Amidst the clash, it paused to introduce itself as a subordinate in service to Lord Vanquish, bearing the title of the Ghoul King, Kion. Despite this revelation, Subaru remained disinterested, his sole intent was to vanquish Kion. Engaging in dialogue, the creature acknowledged Subaru's growth and attempted to entice him with a valuable reward. However, Subaru's unwavering hostility perplexed Kion. Unmoved by the offer in conversation, Subaru remained focused solely on defeating Kion. Subaru unleashed an altered version of his blood mold ability, directing it toward Kion. Yet, the creature swiftly dodged the attack, eluding Subaru's assault with ease. 
Kion found the confrontation thrilling, appreciating Subaru's adept utilization of his master's abilities. However, Kion persisted, delivering a decisive blow that propelled Subaru backward. Engrossed in his monologue, Kion failed to notice a flurry of crimson spikes approaching. Although they encircled Kion momentarily, he deftly evaded them once more. Subaru was gradually grasping the intricacies of Vanquish's blood whip, displaying considerable potential. Yet, Subaru was running low on energy, nearing exhaustion. Kion, having covertly observed Subaru's prior battles against creatures, was aware of his progress. Subaru acknowledged his aptitude for swiftly adapting, adapting to his opponent's combat strategies. Exasperated, he vocalized his fatigue with the ongoing evasion tactics employed by Kion, expressing a deep longing for a direct confrontation, particularly with Sayaka's life at stake. Growing increasingly agitated and halting abruptly, Kion burst into laughter, yet eventually yielded to Subaru's plea. Subaru initiated another offensive, but Kion, wielding the divine chisel, adeptly sliced through Subaru's blood whips, severing their connection and grazing Subaru's left ear. This action startled Subaru, disrupting his focus and rendering his blood mold ability inert, much to his disbelief. Advancing towards Subaru, Kion elaborated on the power of the divine chisel, revealing its infused essence by vanquish, making any defensive maneuvers attempted by Subaru vulnerable. However, Kion's speech was abruptly interrupted as he sensed a tremor beneath them. A knowing grin appeared on Kion's face as a barrage of blood whips erupted from the ground beneath the creature. Subaru extended the blood whips beneath Kion, launching a covert strike aimed at restricting his agility. Impressed by Subaru's adaptability, Kion foresaw Subaru's potential as a formidable warrior. However, Subaru remained silent, assessing the effectiveness of his tactical move. Despite Subaru's relentless attempts, Kion adeptly evaded each assault, reappearing in front of Subaru and landing a powerful blow that left Subaru unable to respond. Following this, Kion executed another strike with the Divine Chisel, causing Subaru to lose consciousness. Yet, Kion, feeling slighted by what he perceived as Subaru's mocking stance, delivered a decisive strike that flung Subaru backward, reclaiming the Divine Chisel. Speaking to the unconscious Subaru, Kion expressed disappointment over what he perceived as a surrender. However, he noticed Subaru slowly rising, displaying an indomitable spirit despite bearing visible battle wounds. Kion realized that Subaru's priority was Sayaka's life, triggering a surge of energy manifesting as blood armor and embodiment of Subaru's unwavering determination. Fueled by intense emotions, Subaru surged toward Kion with enhanced speed, aiming to prevent the Ghoul Lord's escape. Despite Subaru's newfound strength, Kion maintained an advantage, retrieving the Divine Chisel once more, preparing for the impending showdown. He speculated aloud on the durability of Subaru's protective barrier against his impending attack. Rather than bolstering his defenses, our protagonist relentlessly persisted in attacking Kion. Subaru seemed to have abandoned all rationality, showing little concern for avoiding incoming strikes, resulting in a severe injury that severed a portion of his arm. However, Subaru astounded Kion by revealing his capability to mend injuries using the Blood Mold skill, catching the subordinate of Vanquish off guard. Rejuvenated, Subaru continued his assault, ultimately landing a solid blow on Kion. Impressed by Subaru's resilience, Kion realized that the trial's end was near. Subaru showed no signs of easing his assault, the cycle continued as he sustained injuries only to promptly heal them and persist in attacking. Kion began feeling the strain of Subaru's relentless onslaught, deducing that Subaru's actions stemmed from sheer desperation. Despite this unconventional approach, Subaru successfully struck multiple times, times, using his body as bait and relying on his regenerative capabilities. Although Subaru's high-risk strategy yielded results, it led to a rapid depletion of his mana. Witnessing this audacious tactic, Kion couldn't help but smile, acknowledging the daringness of Subaru's methods. An old memory surged within Kion, transporting him back to a conversation with his master Vanquish. Vanquish had recounted an incident where a human had audaciously resisted during the transference of his powers to Subaru. This act of defiance had amused Vanquish, recognizing the courage needed to stand against someone as mighty as him. Vanquish had foreseen that upon encountering Subaru, Kion would be equally intrigued by the human's unique determination, 
considering him an exceptionally captivating individual. In the midst of their battle, Kion realized the validity of his master's words. With a hearty chuckle, Kion admitted to Subaru, I've grown rather fond of you. Initially, Kion had mocked Subaru, insinuating the futility of his strategies, but the mirth swiftly faded from his expression. Subaru's demeanor communicated an unmistakable sense of foreboding, signaling to Kion that this was no time for jokes or pleasantries. Subaru intensified his manipulation of the remaining mana, a surge of energy transforming his arms in preparation for another potent skill. Subaru unveiled the formidable Blood L technique. Initially, Kion seemed to hold the advantage, adopting a condescending stance towards Subaru. However, the situation took a swift turn as Kion suddenly struggled, choked by an unexpected surge of blood escaping his lips. With seamless precision, Subaru executed the Bloodlands technique, skewering Kion directly through. Subaru's motive became evident, Trial's victory was secondary to his unwavering determination to defeat Kion. The sight of Kion lying bisected showcased Subaru's overwhelming triumph. Observing Kion's descent, Subaru's countenance betrayed a mix of emotions. Despite his dire condition, Kion managed a smile of disbelief, acknowledging Subaru's exceptional skill. Subaru, disinterested in praise or acknowledgement, impatiently pressed Kion to meet his end, firmly believing that Sayaka's salvation hinged on Kion's defeat. In the midst of his waning moments, Kion disclosed a pivotal revelation, time within the gate operated independently of the world beyond its confines. This revelation struck Subaru profoundly, signaling a groundbreaking understanding. However, Kion posed a pressing question, how did Subaru plan to endure post-battle without mana, given his grave injuries and dwindling reserves? Subaru remained undeterred, stating he would confront that challenge when the time arrived. His immediate focus lay in ensuring Sayaka's safety, even if it meant sacrificing himself. To Subaru, sacrificing his well-being was the only viable strategy against Kion's might, especially if it could guarantee Sayaka's security. Subaru's preoccupation with his diminishing mana was palpable in his mannerisms. Recognizing the deep bond between Subaru and Sayaka, Kion inquired about Subaru's feelings toward his friend. Overwhelmed by emotions, Subaru shed tears while recounting the unbreakable pledge of loyalty he shared with Sayaka. She represented the singular beacon of friendship in his life. Kion was deeply moved by the revelation, seeing parallels between his own solitary past and the enduring camaraderie shared between Lord Vanquish and Subaru with Sayaka. Recognizing the depth and sincerity of such vows, Kion empathized with Subaru, extending an offering of peace by presenting the divine chisel and bestowing his unique skill. Despite Subaru's initial skepticism, Kion assured him that death within the gate was not imminent, highlighting the distinctive rules of their current environment. Subaru's victory over the Ghoul King, Kion, was announced through a system notification, marking a significant level up for Subaru due to the discrepancy in their levels. This triumph resulted in a surge of radiant energy enveloping Subaru, indicating a newfound level of strength. Subaru's injuries were completely healed, and both his HP and MP were fully restored. Additionally, Subaru received notifications of acquiring the Divine Chisel and new abilities such as Vibratory Sense and Corpse Fest, along with a passive skill called Knowledge of Corpse Fest. The Blood Mold skill also advanced to level 6. This revelation left Subaru astonished, prompting him to contemplate the sudden level up. He realized that the creatures within the gate and those in the trial doors shared identical properties, allowing players to conquer them and gain experience. Kion lingered, poised to divulge further insights about Lord Vanquish and their shared history. However, time thwarted his intentions, leaving his revelation incomplete. In a final attempt to convey crucial advice, he urged Subaru to utilize the Blood Usurper skill in case any of his allies were to fall. Pondering Kion's words, Subaru questioned the existence of such an ability within himself. As Kion began to fade away, he noted Subaru's striking resemblance to Lord Vanquish in both spirit and demeanor, expressing a fervent wish for a future reunion. Subaru successfully completed his second trial door, door, fulfilling his mission. Emerging from the gate with Sayaka, determined to save her, they navigated through the two-star gate, intending to manipulate the sky clock to restore the lost time. 
Subaru swiftly used his phone to summon emergency assistance, urgently seeking aid as the gate behind them disintegrated into fragments. Meanwhile, at the Five Star Gate, Moby Dick's hideout, nestled in Moro City, players grappled with daunting challenges. A substantial number had perished, turning to Julieta's team, the most formidable silver-ranked team in Japan, seeking guidance. Expressing deep concern, one player voiced apprehensions that their entire team would face obliteration if the ongoing predicament persisted. The opposing force they confronted was an immense sky whale, boasting an impressive level of 59. The substantial gap in levels between the players and this creature was evident, clearly placing the advantage in its favor. Julieta's anxiety intensified as his team members succumbed one by one. Adding to the complexity, the colossal creature they faced wasn't even the final boss of the gate. Another player constantly pressured Julieta for decisions, recognizing him as the team captain whose choices would determine their collective fate. Their only apparent strategy appeared to be to wait until the majority of the team had fallen, signaling the gate's reopening. Seeking information, Julieta inquired about the surviving members. As he looked towards the other player, a resolute expression crossed the man's face, revealing his willingness to sacrifice his comrades for his own survival. This realization enraged Julieta, who had taken on the responsibility of leading this mission by volunteering for this specific gate. Before he could voice further objections, Julieta swiftly silenced the man with his blade. It became apparent that the man prioritized his own life above all else, even above the well-being of his teammates. Suddenly, something caught Julieta's attention. attention. A system alert notified the remaining players that the majority had fallen, prompting the gate to reopen. Understanding the situation, Julieta chuckled, realizing that the player he had subdued was the last casualty needed to activate the gate's reopening. The tense scene was witnessed by the remaining players inside, causing panic as they grasped the implication that the monsters from within the gate would now be unleashed outside. Considering joining Julieta in his escape, he commanded them to stay and defend their ground. Julieta's true character came to light as he directed his team members to fend off the beast while he focused solely on securing his own escape. Their lives were inconsequential to Julieta, his own survival took precedence. He swiftly made his escape, leaving the remaining players to confront the encroaching Sky Whale. With few choices, they gathered their courage to protect the outside world. Despite their valiant efforts, they were met with powerful water jets unleashed by the behemoth. Meanwhile, Julieta managed to open the gate and began celebrating, boasting of overcoming the challenge single-handedly. His victorious demeanor quickly dissolved into shock as a red notification flashed before him. The message stated starkly that not a single survivor remained within the gate. The formidable underworld creature was now free to roam, catching Julieta off guard, barely a minute after his escape. A surge of water erupted from the gate, narrowly missing Julieta but grazing him nonetheless. Distressed, Julieta cried out in pain and, and terror, collapsing. Another notification emerged, revealing that the beast would now target the players who had previously entered the gate. As the gate swung open once more, the ominous silhouette of the Sky Whale emerged. Elsewhere, our protagonist had summoned an ambulance, and Sayaka was receiving medical attention. However, her severe injuries required more than basic first aid. The situation was dire. Subaru clung to hope desperately, yearning for Sayaka's survival. As a fellow player, Subaru received a red notification alerting him to the abandonment of the gate, resulting in the mission's failure. The notification also detailed that 5,837 hours remained for this gate, and the sky clock's figures began to alter. The aftermath of a failed quest was now starkly apparent, hastening the countdown toward an impending disaster. Subaru, taken aback, witnessed a dramatic deduction of 240 days from their remaining time. Suddenly, a distressed cry rang out, unmistakably belonging to Julieta. Memories flooded Subaru's mind, recalling their prior encounter at the Federation headquarters. In a state of panic, Julieta urgently demanded immediate medical aid, insisting that the ambulance was essential for his own needs. Spotting Subaru, whom he identified as a novice player, Julieta pleaded desperately for help, visibly terrified by the pursuing Sky Whale. 
He implored Subaru to stall the colossal creature while also attempting to secure the ambulance solely for himself. Boldly, Julieta demanded, demanded that the paramedics abandon their care for Sayaka and redirect their attention to him instead. His disregard for the well-being of others was glaringly evident, he disregarded the pleas of the medical personnel, aiming to leave Sayaka behind, devaluing her life due to her lower player status. Subaru absorbed each uttered word, feeling the weight of the escalating situation pressing down upon him. As events rapidly spun out of control, Julieta, in a state of frantic desperation, continued shouting orders, desperately seeking a solution. Despite the imminent threat posed by the Sky Whale, Julieta's surging anger fueled by adrenaline intensified as he confronted Subaru, who remained an obstacle in his path. This only served to aggravate Subaru further, struggling to maintain his calm amid the escalating chaos. Before Julieta could further provoke him, both found themselves encompassed by colossal blue bubbles, emanating from the Sky Whale ominously hovering above. Meanwhile, authorities in Oro City urgently warned the populace about the roaming monster and urged immediate evacuation. Given its origins from a five-star gate, neighboring residents were strongly encouraged to evacuate as well. Despite the warnings, some individuals chose to stay behind. Subaru, displaying unwavering confidence in the medical team, directed them to attend to Sayaka. Recognizing Subaru's genuine concern for his friend's well-being, the medical team promptly tended to Sayaka's urgent medical needs, whisking her away in the ambulance towards the nearest hospital. However, Julieta persisted in his protests, redirecting his fury towards Subaru and vowing solemnly to defeat him in the future. Before Julieta could utter another threat, Subaru swiftly ensnared him using his blood mold ability. Challenging Julieta to attempt any further actions, Subaru observed his miscal miscalculation. Soon after, Julieta's countenance underwent a startling transformation, suspending him like a cocoon.